This is being recorded. My whole talk just changed. <laughs> to avoid a lawsuit? <laughs> yeah. Or, or losing my job. What? <laughs> One more microphone. One more. All right. You're Thank you. To go. All right, as Chris said, I'm Chris Agee. I've uh, been agronomist with Pennington Seed for 17 years. Pennington started in 1945. What year was Kentucky 31 released? Very good. The professor knows. It was discovered in 31, but it, uh, the, the uh, variety was developed over the years and wasn't released until 1943. And uh, in the 40s and 50s, uh, due to a government funding program, there were tens of millions of acres of K31 planted. And it was a really good program. You know, they w didn't know about the animal effects at that point. But Kentucky 31 has held our world together for many, many decades. And uh, while it's, you know, lots of animal problems, it's kept our soil here and out of the oceans and, and the Gulf of Mexico. So it, it did do some good and actually better than they brought in kudzu as well for erosion control. Uh, can't say as many nice things about kudzu, although sheep and uh, goats love it. And it's really nutritious, but I will not dwell on that. Our uh, two main uh, novel endified products are uh, Jessup Max Q. And maybe I'll get this laser right without it hurting anybody. There it is. Jessup and Texoma are our two main novel endified varieties. And if you look at where they were developed, this is where Jessup came from. It's a, a surviving population of tall fescue there. They became the parent population of Jessup. Joe Bouton bred that up into a, a good variety. And then out in Arden, Oklahoma, at the Noble Foundation, another surviving uh, tall fescue plant population became the parent population that became Texoma. And if you look at this, this is on the, both of these are on the edge, or this is below the edge of uh, tall fescue adaptation. And this is really getting kind of outside the area of tall fescue adaptation. But the point is, very tough area for tall fescue to survive. And the survivors there became the parent population. So these are two. Two tough varieties. So Jessup was the first. It was released in 1999. Uh, it's been planted on hundreds of thousands of acres since then. And uh, all the questions that farmers had were, you know, will this persist better than the last great thing to come along, the endophyte free tall fescue? A lot of Kentucky 31 was killed. A lot of endophyte free was planted. And then farmers watched it die after about two or three years because it was not the same tall fescue that they were used to because it, it didn't have the endophyte. We've learned a lot since then. Got to have the endophyte to persist. Uh, because it was the first, it's been trialed on farm demos to answer that question in farmers' minds. Uh, lots of researchers were interested in it as well uh, because it was the first. And we had lots of uh, demo sites planted throughout the uh, tall fescue belt. And it's a few places that are, it shouldn't be grown and it won't grow. Uh, and then lots of research sites as well, experiment stations, uh, university trials, uh, and all that was to answer the question. You know, the animal performance was not a surprise after what we learned from Endophyte Free, but the persistence was the big question. You know, will it perform as well, as good as K31? And, and what they discovered is it did, but as we point out today, there is grazing management required because they will eat it to the ground. <clears throat> Take some of uh, is the first no uh, novel Endophyte variety released by the Noble Foundation. Uh, they were looking for a cool season grass out there that did better than K31, and they were really just looking for a cool season grass that would live out there, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, uh, and they, they did succeed. Again, it's got the, the Max-Q2 endophyte, different from the endophyte that's in uh, Max-Q. It's actually the, an upgrade uh, endophyte, a little bit better marriage between the fescue plant and the fungus. Uh, not as many trials, but all those trials were very positive. So this is some data from... Ardmore, where they were uh, grazing Kentucky 31 compared to Texoma. And after two years of grazing, uh, well, this is actually yield. Uh, uh, because it's surviving a little bit better, you got a little bit better yield. But then under grazing, uh, it did what they were hoping for. It persisted better than the K31 under Ardmore, Oklahoma conditions. Tough, tough conditions. Uh, we trialed it in Lexington as well. Uh, and it does quite, quite well compared to K31. That's what we always compare it to. So out in Ardmore, uh, that grazing trial, uh, they planted the fall of 2006, uh, 2005, spring of 2006, they put lightweight cattle on it. <clears throat> and then a typical Oklahoma summer, well, not so much typical, but uh, a harsh Oklahoma summer, uh, very dry, hot, no rain, 30 days in the hundreds, zero rain. And uh, so they pulled their animals off, and you can see they left a, a fair amount of residue, and that was key. 
Uh, if you got down there on your hands and knees or the, or the praying position, John, uh, you would find a little bit of green in the crowns there, and they, they left enough residue to shade that crown. And so it did, uh, when the rains returned in the fall, uh, it did come back quite well. And then by the next spring, it was blowing and going again. So it's a very tough grass, very persistent under the hot, dry conditions out there in Oklahoma. Uh, we partnered with uh, UK Extension and planted a bunch of, bunch of demos around uh, Lexington. I'm just going to show you some of that. This is John Thomas's farm. He's just east of Richmond. It's about 200 miles east of here. Kentucky is a very wide state. Uh, and he cross-drilled this, and you'll notice, too, that uh, there is, there's some slope here. It was cross-drilled. This picture was taken, uh, it was planted in the fall of 2016. This picture was taken in the spring of 2017, and we had a fall on possibly the hottest day of the year uh, in August at John Thomas's farm, and it was, it was a very good day. But uh, he, he is well pleased with his stand. He's, he's been grazing it since then, and uh, uh, we hope to get some animal data off of it soon because we think we ha he has enough uh, fencing now. Another field day we did on September 11th this past year on Buddy Smith's place, which is uh, in Anderson County, uh, Lawrence, around the Lawrenceburg area. Uh, and this gentleman here is uh, UK Extension Agent Tommy Yankee. He is the Extension Agent's Extension Agent. And having been an Extension Agent myself, he does an excellent job. And I want to thank him for, for some of these pictures. But Buddy Smith's renovation is similar to what we talked about today. Uh, he, he had two pastures, 12 and 13 acres, I believe, uh, that he wanted to in, improve the fertility. They were, they were thinning anyway. Uh, so he really didn't feel like he was losing that much. Uh, the spring, two springs before he planted, uh, he did some sorghum sudan, grazed it, sprayed it again with Roundup. He's, he's, he's starting to clean up any escapes of the fescue that was there that were, would have been shaded out. And I want you to note that he uh, fertilized uh, many uh, on several occasions to get that soil fertility up. And the reason I have forage collards in red here is uh, I've never dealt with forage collards, but uh, turned out they were really hard to kill. <laughs> and I'll show you picture, but uh, he, gra he planted triticale, leaf, clover, and forage collards and grazed it um, through, through some of the summer, sprayed it again, and then he felt like he'd, by that point, he'd killed most of that existing fescue. There wasn't that much there to begin with, uh, and he, he no-tilled uh, Texoma in the fall of 2016, uh, and this was uh, field number one. Uh, we, we, we couldn't figure out how to get rid of those collards. Uh, they were there. They really, they were, you had bolted, uh, so they really weren't shading the fescue that much. Uh, but they were still there. Uh, so he still, he still got a stand, and then he fertilized that fall. Uh, and then the June of uh, last year, he, was, he grazed it in strips again. And the reason he grazed it in strips was to put grazing pressure on those, on those collards. The other field essentially did the same thing, except he didn't plant collards. Uh, he planted spring oats, and you can see he made pretty good yield off of that nine rolls of haylage. Uh, and then after that was pretty much done, he sprayed it again with Roundup. And again, about three days after the other field, he no-tilled the uh, Texoma into that field. Uh, he cut hay in May of the next year, uh, 87 rolls. That's, that's more than I would have estimated. Certainly, he got quite the yield. Uh, and then he strip grazed it. Uh, he, he pulled the cows out and then fertilized it uh, early August uh, in, in the, uh, the plant to stockpile. Uh, and then he put cows in on that. Uh, I think it was from uh, about 45 days he got uh, off of that until January 3rd. And then the, uh, last year he cut hay on it again. So this is the brain trust standing in pasture number four here. Here's that other field, nice yellow collards uh, blooming there. Uh, and, and this is, shows that intake does increase your average daily gain. <laughs> uh, but this is a field we had a field day on, uh, the one he got all the hay off of. Excellent stand. He actually ended up with an excellent stand here because, like I said, that, those collars were not uh, shading out that fescue. He had good plant numbers. They were just not doing a whole lot under those collars. Uh, back to calibration of drill. Uh, they calibrated. Uh, and I recommend calibrating the day before you're going to plant. They spent two hours calibrating this drill. I think they had to... Uh, should have used your method, but I think they had to actually replace some cultures as well. That uh, really slowed them down. Uh, Lace Field Max Q2 is our, our newest, greatest, newest uh, fescue developed up the road here in Lexington. Dr. Tim Phillips was the breeder. Uh, it is a, a continental type. It has the Max Q2 endophyte in it. Uh, and Tim selected for excellent seedling vigor 
which can be the difference between success and failure and establishing a new stand. It also has excellent uh, cold tolerance as well and uh, all, the, all the other good things you'd expect from a tall fescue. It's in the trials now, and I think, Ray, you've converted that from the experimental to lace field in the, in the trials, so you can find that, but you can, you can see uh, his selection for seedling vigor uh, was quite good. Good persistence. Uh, this was in Lexington, this was in Princeton. Uh, still good seedling vigor, and actually, I'm not sure what happened that year, but uh, Kentucky 31 was taking a beating uh, compared to the lace field. And then excellent yields, that's a three year total. So this fall, uh, look for Jessup Max Q2. We've taken the Max Q2 uh, that uh, wasn't available when Jessup was first released, put it into Jessup, so we expect increased seedling vigor uh, and, uh, and actually just better performance overall uh, compared to just the Jessup Max Q. But of course, there's still lace field. We will have more seed available than we have recently of lace field, uh, and there will also be seed available of Jessup Max Q2 uh, as well. Thank you. All right, let's do it.